I am Florent Massac, um, Deputy Secretary General of the Austro-French Center for Rapprochement in Europe in Vienna and uh, associated to the CIF. The EU Western Balkan summits just took place um, two, day, two days ago and um, there were great uncertainties about um, what would be achieved there. Um, I think to some extent um, the possible damages have been contained. Uh, we have a declaration um, expressly underlining that uh, the Western Balkans have not only European perspectives but that uh, they would join, so the term of enlargement is in the declaration. That was a key uh, contentious um, issue, uh, whether to put it or not. But beyond that, and the announcements that um, there will be uh, new summits yearly organized, um, beyond that uh, we have very few new elements in this declaration. It has been a little bit difficult. There has been a lot of uh, negotiations. The Tallinn group, um, so with Austria and Eastern countries and others, uh, have been pressing to um, issue a very strong signal that the EU remains committed to enlargement. And um, that's referring to uh, the blockage or the stalemate with North Macedonia and Bulgaria. The fact that uh, after France um, and uh, Denmark and the Netherlands opposed the opening of accession negotiations with North Macedonia and Albania two years ago, things have not moved forward. So there was the idea that we need to send a signal. But unfortunately, the signal is very weak uh, because um, even if it's on the texts, um, we don't see how it will materialize. The EU has initiated a new uh, accession methodology this year, but we don't see very much how it will be implemented yet. It remains to be seen. Um, and more generally, we also have a Berlin process, um, which Germany is still taking care of this year, but we don't see who will take care of it next year. Um, so there are a lot of question marks on the methods, um, how the EU deals with the countries of the region and more, more generally about uh, the ethics behind uh, enlargement. What is driving this, uh, uh, this ambition to enlarge to the region? There we have a, a lot of obstacles. The road is very, very, very lengthy for the countries uh, to join the EU. If you just take care, if you just, um, uh, if you just um, consider the criteria, the Copenhagen criteria, and it has become extremely unpredictable. The Western Balkan countries, so the easy answer would be to say they have to wait that the EU countries decide for them uh, and find a solution. But it will not help. It will not help because it, it may take a long time before this happens. What the countries of the region can do, however, is to try to gain leverage um, on these issues. They will not succeed um, alone, um, so just claiming alone that they have to get more swiftly in the EU, but they could do that together. That's a key, that's a key element. Um, they could try to um, claim a right to put the foot uh, in the door, so in the doorway, uh, wherever the EU has options. So for instance, the Conference of Europe, so on the future of Europe, the Western Balkans were excluded for, so from the Conference of Future of Europe. There has been lobbying made, um, uh, so to change that, and now, the declaration also that of two days ago recognizes that they could make a contribution, but that, could, that should go much, much further. That should go towards the Western Balkans uh, advocating for a different methodology so on how to get in the EU and what can be done to get them in the EU. Uh, so not just to follow what the EU does, but to coordinate the European policy there, to pool resources, to send a Western Balkan envoy to the EU so, so this kind of initiative showing a united front um, so towards the Western, so towards the member states.